From the Hagee Ministry Studio in San Antonio, Texas, join us for The Difference with author and leadership strategist Eric Van Alstyne as we explore the power of perception. When people start to understand their perceptual limits, the fact that we're mostly blind, it starts transforming. I had a massive love revolution. If my wife was here talking to you today, she would tell you, it changed me. And if it can change me, it can change anybody. That's my message to some of these leaders. Hello and welcome to The Difference today. Kendall and I are so excited to have one of our favorite people on the set, Eric Van Alstine. He is the author of a series of books on the topic of perceptual intelligence, the first of which is Automatic Influence. Eric, what other books are in this series? Oh my goodness, I don't think we have enough time to talk about all that, but there's a lot. I've actually got seven books done right wow. now. But the publishing is waiting for some of the things to happen that really need to happen from a business perspective because what we do is a lot of training. We're helping people. We're getting out into the market. And so there's a lot coming down the line, and I'm excited about it. But, yes, this is the first in the Perceptual Intelligence series. And, and automatic influence is something that I've shared with people uh, as something that has benefited my life. But it wasn't just a, a moment when I recognized how you know, perception impacted the decisions I made professionally, it started to impact the relationship Marriage, at home, kids. you know, where yep. the conversations changed and the questions changed and the statements changed because I would stop and ask myself, how am I mm -hmm. seeing this versus what, what, what's being communicated and, and what can we do to have a better outcome? Yes. And this is how I became familiar with the concept of perceptual intelligence. What in what your is words oh, is it. Yeah, yes. perceptual intelligence? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm I kidding. I do yeah. know, but it's it's basically, I would call it almost like a philosophy of leadership or a philosophy of influence that helps us understand that perception, meaning the way we see ourselves, others, situations in life, and it's not just physical sight I'm talking about, but with the way we understand and the way we interpret, the way we imagine, the way we remember, anything that's kind of playing on the movie screen of the mind, these things automatically influence our emotions, motivations, and then behaviors. So if you're trying to get to the bottom of the issues, you have to get to the perceptions that drive these things. It's, you know, a lot of times people say things like change your attitude. And, you know, while that's a good idea to do that, it's not the most effective way because there's a perception underneath it that's creating that attitude. attitude. So instead of saying change a behavior and attitude only, if you could get to the bottom of those, get to the root causes where the perceptions are, then it's amazing how things change. And by the way, in the, in the wedding, uh, the marriage kind of uh, mm -hmm. scenario, it's amazing how profoundly transforming it is for someone to say, I could be wrong, and I often am to their spouse. <laughs> and to honestly yeah. say that, that's not a joke, but it is a good joke, but you know well, what I'm saying. Yeah, and, 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 and <laughs> she's, it, she's saying that's the truth. It is. I don't want to get in between you well, two, but. <laughs> You, you've, been, you've been there for a while. Now, you've heard the definition of perceptual intelligence from the individual who authored the book. Yes. Let's see what some folks out on the street had to say about their definitions of what perceptual intelligence is to them. Ooh, that could be something you can obtain. Uh, are you smart? It could be different kinds of intelligence. Someone doesn't have to have a high IQ to be intelligent. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that was good. Uh, looking at somebody and saying, are you smart or are you dumb? <laughs> I'm perceiving how intelligent you are, which is probably completely wrong. But I think it's where you get information to your brain. Perceptual intelligence can be maybe discernment, that he gives you to where you just have that inclination like, Holy Spirit, I'm feeling something. And I think it's just, you dropped it on me just now. She did a, a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like ESPN where you can like read the future? Probably not. Uh, I have a feeling it's got something to do with how you process life. I think it is something where you learn in math. My dad has the eye. You know, the thing that's interesting about all of those answers is that there's a measure of each of them that's correct, 
and then a, 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 a little bit <laughs> of things that need to be, you know, adjusted. Now, yeah. I think it's probably easier to adjust the smaller audience than it is the larger one. That's true. Uh, but, you know, w when people talk about perceptual intelligence, there's been a lot of conversation about IQ, EQ, yep. AQ, mm -hmm. and, and, and this fits into that equation and, yes, and really does. impacts all of them. So how does yeah. it work? So I mean, we all know the emotional intelligence argument that you can be really smart, but if you're not aware of other people's emotions and your own emotions, I mean, it, you can really mess things up. So uh, we're completely in alignment with that, but keep in mind we're talking about the fact that perception, meaning the way we see self, others, and situations in life, and not just physical sight, but the way we understand, interpret, what we focus on, what we choose not to focus on, what we remember, what we imagine, all that stuff playing on the movie screen of the mind creates emotions. So we're really talking about perceptual intelligence as something that's underneath and is the root of emotional intelligence. So it's really important to be able to understand your own emotions and understand other people's emotions as they're happening. But the challenge is that a lot of emotional intelligence can't manage those emotions very well because all they're telling you is what they are, not how to make them more constructive. And we really believe that if we can get to the root of the emotional and motivational challenges, we can fix those things automatically. So it's very powerful. It's perfectly complementary. And they're always saying, you know, EQ trumps IQ, right? You can be very smart, but you can be, if you're not emotionally intelligent, you can't really get along with people and, and get things done in a workplace environment. You're not as healthy in your relationships. What we're saying is that PQ drives uh, EQ. So mm -hmm. perceptual intel or PI, whatever, however you yeah. want to describe exactly. it. Yeah. Perceptual intelligence is the root of it. And when we can start to deal with those root causes of these challenges, man, it's transforming, transforming. Uh, well, and you said something about how you see yourself, how you see others, and how you see situations. Mm -hmm. And I think it's remarkable when you begin to recognize how quickly you mm. see all three of those things yep. and then make very long-lasting decisions instantaneously. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's the mind is so, is so powerful. powerful. It's intuitive, right? Yeah. Most of our reasoning, we think, well, two plus two equals four. We're doing these logical analysis. That's just not the way we reason. It's a super fast, intuitive, instant reasoning. It, it, now, it all is reasonable under the surface. In fact, it's crazy is that perceptual intelligence teaches that all emotion is actually reasonable, meaning that it's being driven by a deeper reasoning that tells us, using our reasoning, what something is and how good or bad it is. Then you feel yeah. good and feel bad in response to that. So it's, it's reasoning, but it's this very deep, intuitive, fast reasoning. So in a blink, we're making assessments about things, and then we're jumping from one thing to another. Blink, 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 right? So yeah. this mind is amazing. It is the, <laughs> it's the most complex thing in the universe. Right, and so a lot of things going on there we don't even understand, but uh, it's amazing how that reasoning happens so quickly. You're totally right, super fast. Well, and speaking of things that happen quick, we're getting ready to go to a quick commercial break, but when we come back, Kendall and I are gonna have more to say about perceptual intelligence and the impact it has in your everyday life. Don't go away, you're watching The Difference. God's Word is full of wisdom related to managing your finances. When you apply these truths, you receive the key to unlocking God's storehouse. To learn more about God's financial plan, request your copy of our Power to Prosper booklet, free with a gift of any amount. And for your generous gift of $200 or more, we'll also include a rustic wooden American flag, handcrafted by U.S. veterans, and our book, Born to be Blessed, containing over 75 blessings that will unleash the power of the prophetic blessing on your family. Release God's promises as you faithfully practice His financial principles and watch as He supernaturally transforms your life with abundant blessings. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org freedom. We're back with Eric talking about perceptual intelligence. But before, um, I just want to rewind about the marriage question. <laughs> you said about what I was, I may be wrong. Yes, it's, the, yes, I may be wrong. I could be wrong and I often am. 
And that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's super good now, for is, Matt. Is, is yeah, this, it's also say, good for each other. Both it, it, each yes. other. Is, is this a comment that, that you expect you both to you're... exchange? Well, yeah. The, okay, so here's the challenge. Most of us are under this assumption that we pretty much see everything. This is one of the first what I call counterintuitive ideas about perception. We have this... We have this illusion that we're basically catching it all. It's almost like this weird assumption of omniscience. Yeah. I am a walking, walking God on earth. I pretty much know everything. I don't need to listen much. Listening is for people who need to know things. Listening is for ignorant people. I know everything. You need to listen to me. That's the, the default oh. kind of mindset, yes, right? Yes, it is. I As can, opposed I can testify to, to you that. Can, <laughs> every, every spouse could. Um, so... When people start to understand their perceptual limits, the fact that we're mostly blind, it starts transforming because I want to listen now. Instead of assuming that I know everything and you're just doing nothing but wasting my time, I'm waiting for you to stop talking so I could start, you know, yes. which is yes. typical. Typical of a husband. Now I'm actually listening to you because I could be wrong and I often am. It's an attitude of humility that comes from naturally seeing our perceptual limits. And when spouses both have this, it's really good. When only one has it, it can tend to get slightly so abusive. how do you get it? You just... How do you get it? Okay, so this, this is... chapter a, five. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's, Tell that's me what why I need to do, the steps to get this. Exactly. It's to get him to get this. Okay. That's typical. You yeah. know, that's a typical well, response. Well, I'm just trying to take ownership, too, of myself. I need to work totally. on myself. So if totally. I get it, you get it, then it's going to... Oh, it is. Well, I'm, I'm telling like you. contagious? Like, if you it get is. it, I'm going to catch it? Yeah. yeah. It could yeah. be. Well, no, I think it'll help and... Someone's going to go there with references yeah. to yeah. contagions. But yeah. it is it is slightly contagious. But the truth is, it's something that has to be deeply embedded in us because it's counterintuitive. We believe okay. the opposite by default. So we have to build what I call new perceptual habits, meaning habits of seeing self differently. This is not something that you can just snap Overnight. your fingers and do. Yeah. So we have a nine-hour course 19 lessons, wow. certification tests. We teach this in companies, not in like one session because it's not like, yeah. hey, four hours and you get this. We're there for years yeah. with them. We've had some companies say, we're going to go to a billion dollars strong in a, in a, as a culture because you're going to help us build leaders that are willing to say, I don't know all the answers. I need to bring the right people in, make yeah. great decisions right. together. Everybody's aligned and on board. We can really move things. I mean, when everybody in organization is paddling the best direction Correct. together, uh, they're, they're unstoppable. Yes. But typically they're not doing that because one person's saying, basically, I know it all, and all the other know-it-alls in the room believe the same thing. And yeah. so what you've got is a bunch of arrogant conflict instead of humble collaboration. So and, that's the same thing in a marriage. marriage. It, well, it, it's... Marriage, but this is something that I've shared with you and, and you know, be glad to say here to our audience that's watching today. Uh, as much as this is working in corporations and helping them improve their culture and their outcomes, mm -hmm. there's such a broad brush to the information that it yes. works for husbands and wives. Yes. It works for parents of teenagers. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, we've got a 15-year-old daughter. Okay. And well, we love her you. dearly. <laughs> but she is very different than she was when she was my five-year-old daughter. Yes. And it's very easy for me to look at her at 15 and go, what changed? When yes. you were five, I would say something yes. and you automatically Smile, believed me. Believe, you yeah. accepted all these details and, and all of a sudden this great deal of, of intelligence and cynicism has saturated the yes. teenage well, being of yourself. Yes. And, and I had five teenagers at one time. Yeah, and you've got six kids. You know, Yeah, of six. So that makes me the and dumbest man saying. on earth five <laughs> times over for a stage. But it's yeah. amazing what happened as they grew. My youngest is 21 now. Uh -huh. And you know, I don't know if you guys ever heard that old Mark Twain story. He says, when I was 15, my old man was so dumb, I could barely <laughs> stand to have that guy around. But when I turned 20, it's amazing how much that guy had learned in five years. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this mindset. I think the, the teenage mindset is the frontal lobe of their brain isn't fully developed. So I try to tell yes. my kids that, hey, give some guy that actually has a full frontal lobe the ability to help guide you because it's, it's really important. The brain isn't fully developed until you're about 25, which is, and that's the ability to see the future, to see the consequences. Mm -hmm of decisions to see beyond when we talked about how pe short people term, long -term. see short yeah. right they see short term they don't see long term and okay. the truth is the world is set up so there's a lot of things that seem good now that aren't good later and we created a lot of controversy in our conversation yeah. last night about this which we won't repeat well you but, know i mean smoking 
Yeah. Perfect, perfect example. You know, when, yeah. when in the 40s, yeah. smoking was so mainstream, Absolutely. it was socially acceptable. There yes. were smoking rooms, there were smoking jackets. Oh, and, it's and, fabulous. And people, Doctors smoked. Yeah, people While they're curing, you know, working on yeah. you, like, hey, you need some of this, I'm smoking. People about yeah. the, the benefits of the calming agents of the nicotine and all these different deals. True. And in the short term, that's true. Fabulous. 30 years later, you exactly. have an entire generation that's plagued with emphysema and, and all these carcinogenic issues that were created because of years of smoking yep. that they had no idea was going to be a long-term outcome of the short-term decision. Exactly. And, and it has to do with a willingness to see beyond what is now. Exactly. In, in order to have the, the, the good of tomorrow. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good now bad later. later. Good, yeah. short, bad, long. There's a lot of stuff in that. In fact, we, the Bible describes sin as fleeting pleasures, right? Fleeting pleasures. So it's the idea that it's good right now, but way bad later. And if anyone could actually see the long term, they would never want to do these things because they know that, hey, it's a little bit of pleasure now and a lot of pain later. later. Who, would, yeah. who would trade a dollar of pleasure for a million dollars of pain? Nobody's that dumb. Uh -uh. But they don't see the million dollars of pain that follow. And so, so they're easily doing it. And that's a teenager. So a yeah, that's a 15-year-old. How do you rear like a 15-year-old to, okay, with your patience. brain's not, yeah, with patience, <laughs> with grace. But. Yeah, I think they have to almost be prepped. They have to believe somehow, maybe if you catch them by the time they're like 10 or 11, 12, and say, listen, we're going into a phase here, and I want to prepare you. You're not in that now. Yeah. But the point is, if, if, a, if someone could truly see their own limits, and this is part of humility. I think part of the problem with teenagers is the same arrogance that we all deal with. It's what got Adam and Eve kicked out of the garden. Arrogance is the number one prime sin. Same. This sense of what, it, what, was the, what was the temptation? You will be as gods. We think we're virtually omniscient. I mean, we're kind of, kind of taking on godlike qualities, at least in our view of the world, meaning that I am the universe. Everything is about me, right? That's the kind of the yeah. typical narcissism is that this little tiny, you know, world that is me is everything. It turns around me. <laughs> everything, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's, 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 you know, enough about you. Uh, let's, you know, enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? I mean, it always seems to <laughs> come back to, come to back me. To yeah. You know, and the truth is we're always seeing out of our own eyes. So it's easy. I, I would call us structurally self-centered, meaning that yeah. every experience of our life is always from inside our eyes. It's yeah. me watching my television. It's my view. I'm always, no matter what I'm experiencing. So yeah. your experiences are out there in some strange world that I actually have to listen to to understand. And no one really does that. I mean, that's hard work and why do it, right? So a lot, that's the default mindset is right. I know my own needs and my own pains and my own pleasures very well. Yours, they don't really matter as much to me and they're hard for me to understand because it's all, you know, everything's about my world. world. So I think there's just this natural structural arrogance in human nature that comes from only seeing here and now, not seeing the long, only seeing the short. Um, and, and that if people can see that that is a problem, mm -hmm. then I think they start to root in humility and teachability. Yeah. In fact, we've been doing some work with fast food fast food industry is onboarding 16 year olds, sometimes onboarding yeah. people that could even be homeless, giving them a new start at life. So what they're trying to do is get these folks to be teachable. So they take them through little sections of our course in order to get them to be willing to admit that I could yeah. be wrong I and I often wrong. am, I often teach am. me. Teach and me. then they start teaching them how to cook chicken or make burgers or whatever. Yeah. Well. One of the most influential and powerful statements that any human being makes, whether they realize it or not, is the way I see it. Mm. Fill in the blank. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the impact of those words on your life and how you cannot erase what you see, but you do have to replace what you see Amen. with something that's a greater reality. You're watching The Difference. We'll be right back with Eric Van Alstein after this. So my parents, they have been a huge influence in my life since day one. My mom and dad, they put so much time and dedication into preaching to others and showing God's light through them. And that's what I want to do someday is show God's light through me. I'm so proud of them and what they've been doing through their ministry and the different show and all their podcasts and all their music and all their radio talks and all that stuff is just amazing. Mom, dad, thank you for all your time, all of your dedication, all of your hard work, everything you put into this ministry to 
show God's light through you. Thank you for helping us kids even through it all because I know our schedules are crazy, but yet you still have time to work with others, to lead others, to guide others in the way that God wants us to grow, that God wants to lead us through. So thank you for being a big influence in my life. I'm so proud of y'all. I love you. See the Bible come to life by standing in the very places where the stories of the Holy Scriptures unfolded. Join Pastors John and Matt Hagee on this extraordinary tour of the Holy Land. Visit historical sites such as the Mount of Beatitudes, where Jesus delivered the Sermon on the Mount, float upon the waters of the Dead Sea, and pray at the Western Wall. Join us November 6th through the 16th, 2023. For more information, call the number on screen or go to jhm.org. Here at Hagee Ministries, we're excited to announce our digital web platforms that provide you with live streaming services, special messages, and series, all through our video on-demand applications. Our Hagee Ministries channel app is now available on Apple TV, Amazon, and Roku streaming platforms. You can also watch our services live on your favorite social media channels, including YouTube, Facebook, or online at jhm.org slash watch. Welcome back to The Difference. Eric, earlier in our show, we asked some of our viewers what they thought about perceptual intelligence. We've got a few more segments from folks out on the street, and we want to find out what you have to say about their thoughts. Eric, how can perceptual intelligence help me in marriage? What the heck is PI? Let's start there. Uh, and secondly, how could perceptual intelligence help me in the workplace and with my coworkers and everything that I do and around me? I've been married now 35 years, so it's different um, each time, you know, throughout the years. So how can perceptual intelligence help me with my marriage now? So some of it we discussed, you know, talking about marriage and, and, and what is it that you would say to each of these individuals if they were sitting down on the, on the other side of the couch from you? Okay, so first of all, there's three questions I'm trying to uh, remember. Marriage, all of them. So, work, marriage, work, and then the different stages of marriage. Okay, okay. So I would say in marriage, we've already had some conversations about yes. that. So mm -hmm. it's very powerful uh, to admit our own lack of awareness and be mm -hmm. willing to listen to other people. What a concept, yeah. right? Yeah. Listening Listen. is very powerful. Yeah. And actual listening, as opposed to biding your, your time. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. listening to you, I'm sure, I'm listening to you. And I'm I think really. it's interesting, you know, you had two marriage statements in that, mm -hmm. in that segment. One was from a man, the other from a woman. Yes. The yes. man talks about marriage. It's just this yeah. big general thing. What does P.I. have a, to do a, with a, marriage? A woman <laughs> says stages of um, marriage. Yes. And, and so she I think, I think you get some insight into a female's perspective of the relationship that it goes through seasons. It's got all these, you know, ups, ups and, and downs. downs. And, and a man yes. looks at it like, not. I got married. I'm still married. It's just yep. marriage. It's yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously we think differently. Uh, and so that there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I, I think that that is the beauty of marriage. Yeah. If we're willing to appreciate each other. Now we teach Four, what we call four prime perceptions, and I can't get into the deep. I can't get in deep into this because they're so profound. They're almost like icebergs, yeah. right? There's a little white on the top, and oh my gosh, the weight on the bottom oh, of this is unbelievable. Yeah. But I will tell you that the first one is the root of empowerment: power over our emotions, to be functional instead of dysfunctional, to be constructive, highly constructive, instead of less constructive or even destructive. So that's going to contribute to a marriage. That empowerment. It's some of the most validating stuff I've ever seen because it says basically we're dealing with the roots of self-control. We don't have to say get, get a grip on yourself so much as we have to change the things that cause us to lose our grip in the first place. And what I mean by losing our grip would be anger, hostility, resentment, all the things that you'd see in a relationship as we're hopefully sharpening each other. Um, the, the, another one is the root of love. And I can tell you as a typical business leader, which is high drive, low empathy, okay, and this self-confidence that you typically aren't good at love. You can do the right things, you can go through the motions, but actually having authentic emotion, really being there for your spouse, that is not common for my personality type. 
I had a massive love revolution. If my wife was here talking to you today, she would tell you, it changed me. And if it can wow. change me, it can change anybody. That's my message to some of these leaders. Yeah. So that's a huge contributor to marriage. So it's the roots of, of power, the roots of humility, the roots of love, and also the roots of peacemaking. The reason conflict gets created typically has to do with the way we see ourselves doing things good, the way we intend good while doing things that aren't. Right. It's hard to imagine yeah. ourselves ever doing anything wrong because we know it all and we always Maybe. intend good. <laughs> but from that mindset, by the way, if you go to talk to anybody in prison, they're gonna tell you the same thing. They had good intent. Good they are not yeah. there because they should be there. It was an injustice, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on earth does good, has good intent while doing things that aren't good, but they're yeah. blind to that. So that means they can't resolve conflict because they can never, never truly admit they're wrong. So anyway, all those things, power, humility, love, peace, massively transforming for marriages. Yeah. The mind is very limited. Conscious thought really, uh, you only have room for one thought at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, for example, to focus on the S-P-E-L-L-I-N-G of a word and, and not, not miss not its meaning the at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's all this, there's this very, very small capacity. It's almost like a bing, imagine your brain is a bingo ball tumbler, you know, all these bingo yeah. balls of thoughts coming down, but only one ball per moment can come down that thought yeah. slot, right? So that means if there's a good ball in the slot, Nothing else can get in. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. So your focus replaces anything else. So if you're focused on the goodness of God, mm -hmm. or you're focused on the good things in life, okay. you have in that moment blocked out other things. So you've made this choice to lock on and block out that can be either constructive or productive. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the places where we see individuals replace the pain of life with the promise of tomorrow is at the Sanctuary of Hope. I want you to take a moment and consider what the Sanctuary of Hope is doing in the lives of young ladies all over this area and find out how you can be a part. The life of a child is precious in God's eyes, and the gift of life is something you can become a part of today. We at Hagee Ministries are offering you the opportunity to change the life of a child and mother by becoming a legacy partner. As a legacy partner, your monthly gift supports the Sanctuary of Hope that is a one-of-a-kind safe haven that provides a home to single expectant mothers and offers resources that will enable them to find success in their communities. The Sanctuary of Hope exists to provide a loving, safe environment where both baby and mother can receive the education, care, and hope they so desperately need. When you partner with us, our legacy becomes your legacy, and together we are impacting lives and transforming nations for Jesus Christ. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org slash partner. Kendall and I want to thank our guest, Eric Van Alstein, for being here with us today. Not only sharing about the power of perceptual intelligence, but giving us information that enables us to change the world that we're living in. If you'd like to find out more information about how you can get your hands on automatic influence and begin the process of seeing things from a different perspective, I encourage you to go to ericvanalstein.com. I also want you to know that here at The Difference, we pray that today's program made a difference in your everyday life as you change the world around you. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you soon from Hagee Ministries.